Okay, good morning, fashion students. Um, this video is part of a multi-part series refreshing the pattern design software that we've been using in class. Um, this video is going to focus specifically on darts and dart manipulation. I'm going to go over a few things um, that we've learned. Just keep in mind, if you are a student or someone in the fashion industry and you're watching this video, um, I may teach things differently than your professor would. So um, just keep that in mind as you watch, okay? So first things first, um, we want to be in the advanced tab in here, okay? And we're going to go into the dart section. I want us to go, we're going to start with adding a dart. And what I'm using as our samples today to show you how um, the darts work is the cami front and then the revised bodice that I had everybody use in class that I gave you the file, the zip file for the revised bodice, okay? So we're going to first practice adding a dart. We're going to add a dart, all right? I'm going to add a dart to the, basically the bottom line here of this cami. This is the top rest would be around here. This is the bottom. Now, just remember when you're adding darts onto a flat pattern piece like this, um, you know, if it's not stretch fabric, darts are put in place to help shape a garment. So you can't just kind of like draw an arrow in there and be like, okay, that's a dart. You have to make sure you remember your dart rules. Okay. So we probably wouldn't put this dart in this location, but I'm just going to show you it here so you can see how it's done. So we go to add, we're going to add a regular dart. It's telling me select an opening point. I'm going to select the point here. It's telling me, see, it's giving me a line, select the dart apex. So I'm going to have it go up to the waistline and then I'm entering a dart width, which, you know, let's say it's three inches. Okay, and there's our dart. Now, if we were to use that in real life, now we're taking three inches out of that waistline. Chances are this pattern wouldn't really work. It wouldn't function. It wouldn't fit, okay? Um, we also want to make sure that we're adding that little fold part, that little extra fold that comes out here. And so I clicked on fold, and it's asking me to click which line to fold to. And anytime we're using darts, darts always fold in towards center front and darts always fold towards the waistline. So if they're horizontal darts, they fold down, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click on that line and it created our fold for us. Okie dokes. All right, so I'm gonna undo all of that. Now we are gonna go ahead, we're gonna add dart with fullness. So now adding this dart in, it would be more functional in real life because it's gonna act like it's adding more fabric to the garment versus the first kind of dart just basically takes fabric away from the garment. Let's go ahead. We're going to add a dart with fullness. Again, looking at our user input box, to see what we're doing. Select dart opening. I'm going to try it over by the bust and see what happens. I'm going to select the dart opening there. Select a point on a boundary line to slash to. So I'm going to select over here. When you're selecting that um, point on a boundary line. Basically, it's kind of whatever's across from it, whatever is perpendicular. Um, select location to remain stationary. We're going to select here to remain stationary. So that's basically the bottom part of the garment. So this part is C. Now this part's going to slash up for however much I want to add for that dart. Okay. And then now it's giving me control over how deep or how shallow I want that dart to be. So if we were maybe going about to the breast point, we'd probably end up about here. And see, it altered the piece for us to give us more fullness, unlike the other dart that did not alter the piece for us. Go ahead and do that. Lastly, under add, I'm going to add a, a fisheye dart. And a fisheye dart is usually used in like a dress. A blouse, a jacket, it goes basically from the bust point through the waist down through the hip. So basically creating that womanly curve that we all have. I'm going to show our center. I want this to be a horizontal because we're going to go this way on our pattern piece. Um, 
the top depth. Um, this is huge, like 10, 20, 10. That's a really, really big dart. So I'm going to change these measurements. I'm going to go from three. I'm going to make the bottom depth five. I'm going to make the width two. And that's about all I need in there. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click to drop it. But you've got to be kind of careful because once you drop a dart, you can't really move it. So you'd have to just undo and redo it. So I'm going to drop it right along my waistline here. There we go. So there's my dart, my fisheye. Okay. So you can see it's a little bit longer going towards the leg and the hip, a little shorter going towards the bust. Um, and that's how you do a fisheye dart. Let's go ahead. We're going to undo. I'm going to delete the cami piece just because um, we don't need her anymore. So let's go ahead and delete her. And let's focus on our, on our bodice here. Get her a little more focus. Okay. So next, I want to show you guys how to manipulate darts. So this is your regular bodice block. It already has a, a, a dart at the waist. And um, basically, if you're making a fitted bodice for yourself or for any other kind of pattern, and it's not a stretch fabric, you've got to have darts in there somewhere to take out fabric to shape it to the body. So this dart really could go anywhere in the bodice, but you have to have it somewhere. You can't just take it away or else it's not going to work. So what I'm going to show you first, I'm going to show you how to rotate the dart. So we go to manipulate and we click on rotate. It's telling us select dart to rotate. So we're going to select this dart to rotate. Select a rotation point. So we're rotating around the bust. Select a hold line. That's going to be wherever our grain line is. So select the hold line right here. And then select an opening point. So where do we want to put this dart? I'm going to put it in the shoulder. Now, remember, see how we have a little menu hanging off our cursor here? I'm going to go ahead and put it at the midpoint of the shoulder. So I'm right clicking, midpoint. Okay. I'm going to click on this line and it should give me angles too large. Let's try again. Select dart to rotate. We're going to rotate this guy. Oh, let me start over just to make sure it's done right. Okay. Okay. Manipulate, rotate. Select dart to rotate. I'm going to rotate this guy. Select rotation point. We're going to put it up on the shoulder. Oh, rotation point is the bust. Select the hold line, which is center front. Select the opening point on the shoulder. Select internal lines to move. I usually just click somewhere in the pattern piece, and boom, it does it for you. Now, at this point, you can control how deep or how shallow you want that dart to be. If you remember from class, we want our dart to be um, five eighths of an inch away from the bust apex or the bust point, okay? Like I could stop the dart there, but you're gonna end up with this big weird puff like above the bust and your garment's just not gonna look how you want it to look. So you're gonna bring that all the way in as close as you think you can get it. And then we went back into verify and we used finished to just double check about how close those points were. Mine are 0.41, so it's almost a half an inch. So I will go back in and kind of play with that a little bit to get it to be that perfect. Um, it's 0.65, I believe is 5.8, 0.65, yeah, all right. Let's go ahead, undo that. Let's go ahead and show you rotating it to the side. So we're gonna rotate it again. Select dart to rotate. Select rotation point, which is the bust. We're gonna select our grain line, center front as our hold. Select our opening point. And then I'm just gonna click inside the piece and it rotated for us. And I'm gonna go ahead again and try to get this about five eighths of an inch from that bust point. Now, see how at the bottom here, it, it shifted the line for us because that line would no longer be straight. If we were working with this pattern piece in real life and then we closed that side dart, that's gonna straighten that line for us, okay? And make it a straight waistline. But it's a little on the wonky side. So let's go ahead and let's smooth it out just a little bit. Um, I'm going to turn on our intermediate points because we don't see those. 
Let's see, we've got some intermediate points in here. Uh, let's go to modify. Let's delete a point. I'm going to delete this guy right here. Yeah, that helped just kind of make it a little bit more smooth. That was a little bit of like an odd line there. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're going to undo. Back to our original. We're going to go back to advanced. Manipulate. Um, I tried doing the distribute same line. We did this in class for some reason. It was being all sorts of wacky on my computer, but I know we did it in class. But basically distribute the same line is when you take that one dart and if say you want to split that one dart into two darts or three darts or four darts, whatever your design is calling for, um, you can pick your dart and then pick your line, pick your points along the line, and then pick a percentage of how much of that dart is going to get distributed out onto those other darts, okay? But I'm going to also just show you how to distribute and rotate. So this is what we're going to use when we want to take some of this dart, say half of this dart, and we want to say put it in the shoulder or put it in the side, okay? So I'm selecting my dart to rotate. I'm going to select the rotation point again, which is the bust. Selecting my hold line, which is my grain line center front. Select an opening point. I'm going to do it on our side seam right here, okay? All right, and I'm going to move 25% of, of the uh, dart, okay? I'm going to hit 25, okay? And I'm going to click in the piece. Oh, and that did not work. Why did that not work? Let's try that one more time. Manipulate. Distribute and rotate, select dart to rotate this guy, select rotation point, select hold line, select opening point is here, 550. select internal line to move. Oh, that's why. Okay. Sorry, I forgot that one step. So instead of just clicking somewhere in the... Um, in the piece like we do on the other dart, you have to actually click on the dart that's getting moved or else it'll it'll get all wackety whack on you. So remember again, we have the freedom to move this dart point. We're gonna make it as close as we can to be about five eighths, click it. And now we've got our two darts here. Um, and that was pretty much what we did for darts. So if there's any other kind of really specific dart things you need to know, um, just let me know and we can talk about them individually. Um, if you're watching this from another class of some kind, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, but just remember, you can't just create a dart out of nowhere. If you have a flat pattern piece and you're putting a dart in it, you most likely have to add fullness in order to put that dart in. Otherwise, the pattern just really isn't going to work for you in real life. I hope you found this helpful.